lenses take advantage of refraction. Um, and let me just show you a couple examples of lenses. There are two types. One is called converging, the other one is diverging. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is called a converging lens. So it looks something like this. Again, that's a converging lens. Uh, there's reasons why it's called converging. Um, if you look at the focal points, so like in mirrors, there'll be two of them on either side. Uh, it turns out that if I stick an object, I'm going to stick an object way out here. So let's say I put an object right out here. Here's what confuses a lot of students. Now, I'm going to draw the rays. There are two rules you need to know. First of all, um, there actually are three rays you could draw. I'm not going to draw all three. I'm only going to draw two of them. And One of them here is going parallel. So you go parallel, pardon me, parallel with the principal axis and then you go through the focal point that's on the opposite side. So here are the two focal points. I'm going through this one. The other one that you can draw is essentially you go straight through the center. Okay, so if I had like a nice ruler here I could go straight through the center and where these two meet, let me just continue this line here, where those two meet is where my image would be. So my image would be right there. That w that's where my image would be. Okay, so where those two meet. There is a third one you could draw, and I could do this. I could also say, well, go how about going through this focal point and then going parallel. And of course, you'd meet the exact same way. They actually all should meet up. It's kind of redundancy, so normally you'll just see me go parallel through the focal and then through the uh, center. But you can go do this one as well. They'll all meet up together here, and that's where your image is. You can see my image is inverted. Okay, now the question here is, is it virtual, is it real, what is it? Um, well, it's different than mirrors in that you have to think about where I stand. Like, think of your glasses. If I have a, a pair of glasses, I try to look uh, through them, as opposed to a mirror, which I want to be reflected off of them. So in fact, this image right here would actually be a real image. That's real. And the reason is, is because my eye is somewhere over here. Again, I have an object. I should have a lens in between the object and my eye, and this is where the real image would form. If it was on this side of the mirror, it would be a virtual image. Or pardon, this side of the lens, it would be a virtual uh, image. So this would actually be a real image. Now it goes into notation. The focal point, anything on the this side of the mirror is positive. This side's negative, except for the object itself. The object is always positive. But if the image was over here, okay, if the image is over here, then it'll be a negative in terms of your numerical value. Um, but the focal point here is positive, and in this case, I would get a positive value for the image because it's real. It would be inverted, though, however, so I'd get a negative height. Um, now, you notice I put the object very, very far away from this focal point. Well, what if it was close? In other words, actually, what if it was beyond it? And here's, the, let's say, the two focal points. And I have an object that's right over here. How would I draw this? Well, again, I go parallel and through. And I also go through the center. Now, you'll notice that these li lines are not going to um, converge on each other. They're actually diverging. Now, if my eye is over here somewhere looking at these two lines coming at me, I'm going to see them in straight lines. I'm going to trace them back behind here. And in fact, I'm perceiving the image to be right about there. This is where the image would be. So you notice that this one is a real image. And now, as you've guessed it, that's a virtual image. Okay, So I'd get a negative answer for my DI. H DO is still positive, and it's actually upright and magnified, as you can tell. But it depends on where I put it for a converging lens. The other type of lens is called a um, diverging lens, and it looks something like this. If I have same thing again, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a diverging lens. Sometimes this is called a double concave. The other one there that I just drew is called a double convex, or a converging lens. This is a diverging lens, okay, or sometimes called a double concave. Um, again, there's two focal points, but what you'll notice will happen here is this. If I have an object, okay, here's my object, and I'm going to draw the same thing, straight. Now, instead of through it, because it's not converging on it, it actually diverges. The light rays actually will branch out. And it diverges as if it came from here. So it's like it came from here, and it'll spread out like that. Okay, it diverges, so it goes parallel and then up. Okay, parallel and then away from this focal point instead of towards that one. Um, the second line I can just draw as normal. 
going through the center. Now you notice if my eye is over here somewhere looking at both these rays, I'm going to trace them back and that's exactly, let me draw a different color here, this is exactly where I think my image is. You notice my image is upright, smaller, okay, but it's on this side which means my object will always be positive but in fact this case my my di will be negative. My hi will be positive because it's upright but my di will be negative. Okay. Um, and my focal point, because it's on this side, this is the one I used, not this one, is also negative. Okay? So just be aware of these, these points here that for a diverging lens, you have used a negative value for your focal length. Uh, in this case, your DI will be negative, and it actually doesn't matter where I put it, my DI will always be a virtual image. One last point to point out here is that if I look at this last one here that I drew, okay, let's say this one, and suppose um, right here I put I could put a another uh, lens so if there's another lens right over here instead of that what it would happen is that this uh, actually you know what let me make it a little bit further something over here so here's my my new lens what will happen is that this image will become the object for this and then I have to do all my ray tracing again this is called a compound lens and what you do is you take the one image to be the object for the other and then you have to kind of do all your math all over again. It's a little, it's much more cumbersome and very time consuming um, but sometimes you can ask those type of questions.